opposites attract. That's what they always say, isn't it? Yeah. Do they really attract? Or do you think I don't know. A bit of a and I think nowadays we're looking to be with people that are more similar to us rather than opposite. I think there's yeah. a big trend moving towards a similar. So I don't know if that's actually mm. a problem or not. Could that be good or maybe Could... not? Could that be an issue? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Wait, that's what we're going to be talking about in Get, Get Real, Real with, with the English, English sisters. sisters. As always, it's our own point of view. So hopefully... You will agree with us. Well, you can relate to it or on some level. you might not yeah. agree. And it might be, you might have the opposite mm. point of view. That's good too. That's good too. And I think, <clears throat> what was I going to say? I think like with, um, I, I think it's because it's the algorithms as well. They're helping us to always look into our own little world and have just things that we like and are similar to us. Ah, you mean like on social media, yeah. for example? So, so, and so in real life, whereas before we would be like just thrown into situations where you might have like people Somebody with opposing, completely different to you, yeah, yeah, maybe opposing political views, opposing religious re- religious views to you, yeah, would be thrown into that kind of environment. Whereas now we're we're more and more choosing what we want, and I think Absolutely. we choose similarities well yes yeah you you, especially i mean like if you're going out with friends Mm. you don't really want a friend that's completely different to you that has a you know just like what you were saying before you know they just like opposite to everything that you like because then it's going to be pretty different you know it's going to be difficult to 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 be able to hang out for a start because they'll probably want to go to different places than yeah, you. Yeah, no, and... but isn't that a good thing? Because they take you out of your own comfort zone and they take you to places. Yeah, but let's you... face it. If I've got a friend that she always wants to go and and hang out at some nightclub or something, and I and I'm not into that at the moment, I'm going to be saying no lots of the times. But yeah. you could also be the love of your life at that nightclub. I guess so. Yeah. So, what are you trying to say? Is I'm that we should to be say flexible? Is that yeah? I think that the fact that we always tend, especially now, to look for more similarities to ourselves is is causing a bit of a problem. We tend to want because similarities to everything, don't in, we? Even yeah. with in our own families, with our parents or with our caregivers, we want them to think like we do. Yeah. Whereas they do not. <laughs> <laughs> and we know that at any family gathering, it is best to avoid certain arguments because yeah. otherwise you're going to, especially about politics or, you know, something like that. Whoa, stay clear away from that. You yeah. know, that's what we used to do. I mean, I still say it nowadays. Do not no, talk about this I and don't. that. I don't discuss. Yeah, because that's a main reason. <laughs> but but it, in a way, it's a shame because it is a shame. we can't know. But it's okay not to discuss, but we can still enjoy that person's company and be in really good company with them. Oh, yeah. And really, and really have a good time you with them. I still love them, but well, I accept the fact that they, they're different. Yeah, whereas yeah. now I think there's more a trend to not wanting to accept that. And I think we're limiting we're limiting ourselves in a certain way because we're not open to hearing new ideas. We immediately shut off as soon as we hear that someone hasn't got the same, I don't know, like views on something as us. We're shut off instead of ready, being curious, being, being curious yes. and willing to learn and uh, like look into their shoes, maybe why, you know, what's their past been? Why do they think like this? Instead of just saying, no, that's bad. I don't want to do that. I, you know, I don't believe in that. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. And I think we limit our own experiences so much by doing that. Yeah, and I think this can also be like from if you're a parent, you can also, you may have a child that's the complete opposite to what you were like. Yeah. You know, has a completely different passion or a completely different view of life or uh, they have a different kind of idea about sexuality, whatever it is. And, you know, it's you you say you love them. And so it's important for you to love every aspect of them, even if they are completely different, all the opposite to you. And I know that that's very difficult for many people to fully accept their their children. Well, I think they, do, they can say, even if okay, they're completely I'm not, different. I, it's, that's not for me. 
as a parent yeah. that's not for me but I accept that that's what my child it's really is difficult chosen. though as we know as therapists we know that yeah. a lot of parents have great difficulty with accepting the fact that their children are the complete opposite to them for example if one is a great he, the, the, the parent is a great businessman and by the time he was 25 he created an empire and then they they judge their sons and daughters and think look what are they doing why Nothing. haven't they yet yeah, come on they've got they could have the knowledge from me i could be why aren't they inspired you know i don't I, they just do not like that about them they say you know you, you, you. this is something because they, they, hey the children might be the opposite they may be the well, opposite like chalk and cheese is different isn't it yes but it's hard when they actually your children it <laughs> may be easier if it's like a romantic relationship to well, accept. I don't know if it's easy if it's a romantic relationship. It's very because difficult. when your children grow up, I mean, you don't have to see them all the time. Whereas no. a romantic relationship, you're with them 24-7. I'm not 24-7, well, but a lot. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you'd want to be with them 24-7. I mean, it's pretty difficult, especially if you're working. A lot of the time, yeah. you're with them a lot. Yes, yeah, I guess you're right, yeah. So, but... I think they're it, like your partners, aren't they? Your pa partners in crime for some reason. I'm thinking, well, I don't know why. Why in crime? But <laughs> in crime, if you're together and then you don't like what your children are doing, I suppose. Yeah, well, it, it's because the children are opposite to you. That's why it made me think about but how many parents your kids have children. Or your children, when they even when they're grown up, they don't agree with what you're doing. Like I was reading the other day, I was reading on Reddit on this, that there was um, this man, a son that lived with his mum. He was already grown up and he was looking to move out. But he said, I can't understand why my mum insists on cluttering the whole house up when she knows it makes me so, so anxious and it causes me great anxiety. And yet she seems to have no regard for me. She seems to just continue like cluttering things up when I've asked her not to so many times yeah but whose house was it it was her house <laughs> I mean come on <laughs> sorry but I mean it's her house and is this is this is an adult this is man. an adult man well then it's time for you to move into your own space yeah he and... said he kept his room tidy but he said he had constant fighting with his mum over this thing and i said as as a therapist i suggested i looked i said look first of all time i can i can empathize with you that if, it you're, is the, difficult. if you're the opposite to your mum and you like minimalist style it is going to cause you anxiety i can i can empathize yeah, yeah. but for your mother the clutter that she has obviously gives her comfort. So it's two sides of the same coin here. For one, it's comfort, and for the other one, it's anxiety. So, you know, I think if he is a bit more empathetic towards her needs and understands that Definitely. for her it's causing her... It's causing, giving her Giving comfort. her great comfort, yeah. he might be able to understand it, that it's the same as his problem in the end. So in order for opposites to get along, yes. you have to be flexible yeah. and you have to step into the other person's kind of viewpoint, into their shoes and see where they're coming from. And then, and only then, will you be able to be attracted to them. In, in I mean, I know they say opposites attract, like it was, it's a phrase from like, normally they're talking about different sexes and, you know, r romantic relationships, don't they? I think they? it's like when you have like opposite points of view, so the opposite to you. So uh, yeah. you mean, you, you know, that's why the actual phrase was coined, yeah. you know, opposites attract, it comes from the like, fact that... Because a lot of the times, like, our mum was really noisy, wasn't she? Real chatterbox oh and dad was really quiet. Yes, they were very, very much opposite. the opposite. He was very reserved in some ways and she was all the other ones splurting everything out as yeah. soon as she could. Yeah, you're right about that. So, yeah. and, they were, and they had a very successful, very long marriage till death did their part. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah. Well, what about you? Do you think that you're the opposite to your husband? Not completely, no. But very much. Uh, but a lot Quite of, a lot. A lot of the times there are opposing mm. views. <laughs> <laughs> Not only opposing, but when you first started going out together, you were much like the opposite. You seemed like to be quite lively, very extrovert. He appeared to be extremely shy. 
and no, but he wasn't really, really shy because he played football. He was part of a big team. He was quite in in his own way. He was quite an extra. He was quite well known in was his he, own circle. Uh, from from the outside, I remember when I went to see you at uni. He he seemed like this really shy person. Yeah. And you were like, no way. You were like eighties girl with all <laughs> wow. going nuts. He was more reserved. In he that was way. much more reserved. <laughs> but he was also very much part of teams that I wasn't. I was more of an individualistic person. He yeah, so you admired term. that part of him, the team thing. Yeah, because you keep on going on about it. The team, <laughs> the football team. I mean, there's obviously something you found attractive. Well, what I yes. mean is he wasn't just a person that was in his own world, just an introvert. He had lots of friends. Yes, yes. He was He was sociable. Even though he was kind of shy. Yes, he was whereas like... I might have been sh- more shy but I was more like externally, it looked as if I was louder because yes. I had a lot of, I wore lots of bright makeup yeah, and yeah, short yeah. skirts and a very 80s, like what you said, very yeah. 80s, 90s, very yeah. much like extravagant, extra- but on the sort of London scene. Bit. The, on the surface, but then really <laughs> underneath so you were shy. Yeah. Whereas he was more outgoing underneath. Even though he Even looked, though so he looked shy. shyer because yeah. he was very like, yeah, that was funny. That he was, was very much more like more discreet in the way he dressed. Oh yeah, he wore his mum knitted <laughs> jumpers. And oh, things absolutely. Like that. He looked like a, <laughs> you know, a very good lad. Yeah. Whereas you were like more of a bit of a rebel. You know, yeah. it was from coming from London. But I wasn't really a rebel. No, no. But I might have been in some ways. Some ways it was probably your way of conquering. Mm. You know, this new but I just think that now, because I know, like, some of my um, people I know that uh, they're looking, they're dating, they're looking to date now. And I know that on the dating apps as well, you can, you can tick everything off what you're looking for. And yeah. it's really easy to... Look for similar. Look for similarities. Oh, they love dogs. I love dogs. I love. They don't like cats. I don't like cats. Yeah, or I don't love dogs. And isn't that helpful? Come on. If I've got two dogs, you would think it is helpful, but then maybe in another way, it's not. I know. It limits you. It is because if I don't, if I say no, I don't. If I say I'm a cat person or I'm a dog person, and they might have a dog, and then you fall in love with that dog. You might say I don't like pets. I don't like to have pets, and then you might go and meet the person that's got this lovely dog and falling madly in, in love, love with, with the, the dog. dog and suddenly your world not like the person wardens <laughs> <laughs> yeah the dogs i mean they can really the, do- the doggy oh they can the, make your and heart then you can go away and adopt a dog but what i mean is that you it, want that dog it it, 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 it it enriches you in a way it doesn't does it? even it things you don't you want in the to things do. that you don't want to do it can really, yeah. So maybe we shouldn't well, be so scared you, of the things that you can't do. Because you feel you have this fear of doing them. The other person there is more outgoing and yes. saying, come on, you know. It'll let, be okay. It'll be okay. Let's go here. Let's, I mean, I know a lady who's just gone into mountain climbing. She's in, <laughs> she's 56 because her partner is really dedicated to mountain climbing. And it's something she said I would have never, ever done before in my life. Well, I know. But she's suddenly become really sporty and her whole world (laughs) is like opened up because of this, you know, this difference. So very different people indeed. Very different. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, opposites attract is good not to be frightened of opposites. I think that's why the saying exists. Right. Yeah. But I think what we're doing now we're is secretly, we're cutting this all oh, this out. So we're like being too selective. So do you think as humans we're secretly attracted to well, the we opposite are because it's something for that... our genes. For exactly. our genes. I mean, my daughter's a scientist, Jasmine, and she she, she tells yeah. me but I knew this already from yeah, biology. Yeah. I mean it's yeah. pretty obvious. But the more the more, you know different different you are, the more chance you know, you've got you've got of, of having stronger Genetic background, yeah. Stronger stronger offspring. Goodness me. So we should not, when we do feel attracted to something that, something. (laughs) Yeah, no, even something. Something, yes. Because something that we might think, hey, that's not really me. Well, it could be. Hmm. It could be you. (laughs) It could be you. How do you know? Yeah. I mean, I used to think I would never play Um, golf and look at me now. Oh, my God. I know. That's so weird. Yeah. That you really do like it. 
know. And all the aspects of it I thought would be really difficult and that I wouldn't like. You just thought it was boring. Yeah, but the the, the fact that there's so many rules and there's so much, you know, stuff and I thought would be so difficult. That's what I'm finding the most challenging and the most exciting, which is a real learning curve for me because I never thought that would be the aspect that I actually like. No, I thought I would definitely all think the that's the most boring thing. all the different clubs and everything you have to use, I used to think, what the heck? Yeah, just give me one club just and what, throw that thing into the hole. What are you talking about? How, yeah. and how the hell am I going to be know. able to use all that, all those? And that's what I find now really exciting. Oh, I can use this one. I can use that one. Yeah. That's what that's what you like. What, what I like. Well, now. that's what you like. I'm not into it yet, but yet. <laughs> I mean, normally everything you do, I'll probably get into it sooner or later. I don't know if I have the time for it at the moment, but you know, you can make time for things you really love. When you love something, mm. the time appears. Yeah, that's that's. And the, even you if you don't, find... when you start something new, it's it's your 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 horizon expands because you have you have more energy in the end. Well, you've got different neurons that are actually yeah. firing off in your brain. And then they're, they're like creating new pathways. They're like actually firing together when you've got a challenge, something that's different. So when you do everything, when you're always repeat, what are you laughing at? You know it's I'm true. thinking no, because I'm thinking, so when you have an opposite, like, mate. Yes, it's, it's probably firing all these different <laughs> neurons and you're having to try and understand that person trying to figure them out, trying to... So it is a challenge. It's yeah. definitely a challenge, yes. Yeah, it's, it's like learning so it's some... Like, it, like, makes your brain grow. Kind of. It's like brain food. It is. It is probably like brain food, so we should not be so frightened of it. <laughs> we should not, even though I know why we are frightened of it, because we want to stay in that homostasis, you know, static kind of position of things that we know... That we've tried out, you know, the ro- the path well trodden, what is it, you know, is the one that's safest. It's the chosen one. <laughs> I, d- I can't remember the saying now, but <laughs> the path that you've basically always walked on is like, you know, the path that you know. It's and a safe one. It's a safe one. And the other path, we don't really know yeah, what's down could there. Be, it could be the boiling frog syndrome, couldn't it? That you, that you is. are in that and you're stuck in that rut and you don't realise it and you're always on and on and on looking for the same kind of saviour, looking to date, the same kind of person in the end could be the one that's just not right for you and and the opposite kind of person is perfect. Yes, you in might this. think, oh no, I don't like that guy, I mean, or that girl or, or them because they're into sports like what you were saying and they're really, no, 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 no. That's not the person, and keep on ticking them off. Yeah, and they could be the they best. Could the be... best thing for you. Yes, yeah. So, so expand, expand. I think when you expand any horizon within you, it's always a good thing. Obviously, if it's if it's ethically correct. Yeah. yeah, that's what we're talking yeah. about. But when... then we're not talking about the crimes, <laughs> like what you say, partners in crime. I don't even know why you're talking about that. Obviously, that that's 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 <laughs> obvious. We are talking about things that are ethically correct, and yes. then we <laughs> that was that was that's, that's given, isn't it? Come on, that's a given. So <laughs> let us know what you think, and as always, please do tell a friend about this podcast because it's uh, one of the number one ways of helping us grow. And we are in most continents of the world now. So yes, we it's are. Very exciting. Very, very, and very. And if you'd exciting. like to support our work, you can come and watch our YouTube video as well. And you can buy our book, Stress Free in Three Minutes, which is available on Amazon and probably. Yeah, wherever bookstores. you get your books. Wherever you get your books. So have a look for it. And. And, and and I'm going to look for an opposite now, or something oh, that I wouldn't normally do. I'm going to go and do it. Gosh, really? Well, yeah, I have to look out for something. Something that's the opposite? Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you think it could be just like watching a TV show? Well, you would never well, watch that's what I have done, something actually, that's easy. Because yeah. I've been watching the comedy specials that I would normally... Sn- really? I like them. ...snub my nose at, because <gasps> I would think I can't the be bothered. stand-up live comedies. I don't like... Well, I, d- I thought I didn't like but stand-up, them. but I do but like it. Them. They're I do. funny. Yeah. I do love it. I've been watching two of them. There you go. On Netflix, the Netflix ones, they've been very entertaining. So maybe and they, just something as learnt. small as that. You they've know, like... taught me stuff as well about myself. Really? Go well, they've taught go me that them. I like. <laughs> <laughs> they've taught 
<laughs> you, that you like stand-up shows, comedies. Okay, yes. I thought it was something more than that. Well, maybe there are other elements. You don't. We don't even realise what they're teaching us. They yeah, do. They teach they you teach. to be more tolerant as well. Mm, I don't well, know. Well, I don't know about tolerant a comedy show, but who knows? Because it pushes your boundaries, doesn't it? It's something you're not it, because usually it's doing. Not some... It's opening your world up. Yeah. It's, yeah. We're living, we live in these little cocoons. and Well, we repeat the same things yeah, over and over, over, and over, and over, over. again. So it's opening, opening up. Changing, of changing. View. Going and watching a show that you normally wouldn't watch. Going to the theatre. Now I don't like the theatre. How do you it's really boring. know? It's boring. You've watched one show. Come on, let's be frank. Yeah. You may get something. I don't like the opera. Then you might start even you, you, you know, classical. They say, no, I don't like the opera. You go to the opera and then they're crying next to you. So I what know. are you saying? They don't like it. You're getting emotional. Come <laughs> on, you do really. You've obviously got something from this. I know it might not be your regular thing you want to go and see. But look, something yeah. has happened here. <laughs> something has been stirred. <laughs> so you never really know. No, so we've got don't. to keep our eyes and open yeah, ears and... okay, yeah. Try something new and come and say hi to us at Get Real with the English Sisters on Instagram or the English Sisters everywhere else. And we love you all. Dots yeah. of love and smiles from, from the English, English Sisters. sisters. Bye bye. bye.